So now we'll go through the types of chromatography, but I think it's a good moment to talk about what the different analytical techniques are separating based on. So chromatography is a separation based on polarity differences. But distillation is something where you separate based on boiling point differences. Extraction involves separation based on acidity or basicity. And spectroscopy is a way of identifying what kind of compound you have by looking at what type of light rays it absorbs. And so if you are thinking about analytical techniques, it's good to know sort of how they work and their general operation, but also understand what they separate based on, because that can be a very, very commonly tested topic. So chromatography is all separating based on polarity differences, and we've discussed how it separates based on a stationary phase that is rather polar, and it has an adsorbent material, which is something polar that other things bind with, and a mobile phase, which is a oftentimes a liquid, sometimes a gas, but it contains the unknown mixture you're trying to analyze, and the more polar parts of that will interact more with your stationary phase because polar things interact with other polar compounds. And so one type of chromatography you'll deal with is column chromatography. And I've drawn a schematic here of what goes on with column chromatography. The stationary phase in that is polar beads. So there are beads within a packed column that have some sort of polar quality to them. And the mobile phase is a liquid mixture. It's a mixture usually with several different organic compounds contained within a liquid that oftentimes is dissolved in an ether, but sometimes will be dissolved in other things. And the only real note with this is there's a vocabulary term known as elution, E-L-U-T-I-O-N. And elution talks about the escape from this column, how quickly it moves through and escapes this column. And so with column chromatography, what you do is you have a packed column with beads, and into that you pour a liquid mixture. And the polar components of the liquid will attach more to the polar beads, and so that means that they will travel more slowly down the column, whereas other things will travel more quickly. And the least polar compounds, the ones that don't have polarity and thus don't interact with your stationary phase, those ones will travel through and elute out of the column very, very quickly. Whereas the more polar the component of the mixture is, the more slowly it will move because it will continuously react with that stationary phase of those polar beads. And so you can look at how quickly things elute through this column when you pour your liquid in there. And if it elutes very quickly, it's not polar. If it elutes somewhat quickly, it's not very polar. And if it takes a long time to elute and move through based on gravity, then that means that it's polar and it's interacting with your beads. And so as a result, it does not elute through the column as quickly. So that's column chromatography. And it's something you've probably encountered in an organic chemistry lab if you've taken those courses. Paper and thin layer chromatography are very, very similar approaches that use either a paper with an adsorbent material, so you'll have a strip of paper like this with some sort of polar adsorbent material incorporated into the paper, or with thin layer you have either a sheet of glass or plastic that is similarly in a strip like this, and on that glass or plastic you've attached some sort of polar adsorbent material as your stationary phase. And so both of these look very, very similar. What you do with these is you'll mix up your compound, your unknown mixture, and you'll place little dots on a distinct point. Perhaps you'll make a line on the paper or the, or the thin layer material, and you'll put little dots here. And then what you'll do is you'll end up placing this in perhaps some sort of beaker or something containing a solvent, which will usually be an ether. An ether, remember, has the functional group R, O, R like that, where the Rs are some sort of organic compound containing a lot of carbons. And when you see an ether in organic chemistry, there are one or two reactions that it can participate in, and we'll go through those in separate videos.
However, when you see an ether, your first thought should be that an ether is a solvent because ethers are one of the most popular solvents in organic chemistry. And so when you see ether in some sort of reaction environment, think solvent. And so essentially the way this chromatography works is you take this strip with your little dots where you've dabbed your sample on there and you put it into a beaker containing a solvent like an ether. And what will happen is, as you know, for example, with paper, the ether will attach to the paper and then it will continue to travel or migrate up the paper. And the ether, being a fairly non-polar group, will travel quite quickly because the ether is not going to interact very much with the adsorbent material, which is either on the surface of your thin layer or it's incorporated into your paper. And so the way that this works is the ether or the solvent will continue to rise up and it will rise slowly and eventually it will reach the level where you've created those little dots where you've dabbed the material onto your stationary phase. And when that happens, this material will get caught up in the ether solvent and so it will continue to travel upwards as well. So it will be your solvent as well as your sample migrating up this stationary material. And the way that it separates is very similar to chromatography of other types like column chromatography. Essentially, the more polar components of these mixtures will travel more slowly and so they will not move as quickly as the ether moves up your sample. And you might run this procedure for five minutes or 20 minutes or some, uh, some given amount of time. But essentially what will happen is the ether will just continue to migrate up until it reaches some level that you've established. Perhaps you've drawn a line on this paper or on your thin layer material. And the very polar components will have migrated very little because they will have been too busy interacting with the adsorbent material. And so they will have moved a small amount. The less polar components of your mixture will move more quickly. And so this one, notice, has moved a fair bit. It's more polar than an ether because the ether moved all the way up. But it's far less polar than something that didn't move very much. So the rule is the less it travels, the more polar that compound is. There might be various ways that you can then visualize the separation. You might use iodine or something like that, but you're not responsible for knowing that procedure on the MCAT. But what you are responsible for knowing is that the more polar components, when they're caught up with the ether, they will not migrate as quickly as the ether solvent will. And so the things that travel less are going to be more polar and the things that travel more are going to be less polar. And again, it's because the polar things interact with your adsorbent material and the non-polar things don't. When you're dealing with either of these two types of chromatography, and remember that the mobile phase is your liquid mixture carried in your solvent. When you're dealing with either paper or thin layer chromatography, you'll hear the term RF or retardation factor fairly often and what it means is it's the amount that the movement is retarded, that it's slowed down by the fact that the material is interacting with your adsorbent material. So if it's a more polar component of your mixture, it will interact a lot more and that will slow or retard its movement up this stationary phase. The way that you calculate an RF is fairly simple. You look at the distance that the substance migrates. So you basically measure from this line here where the solvent was moving up and it finally interacted with those dots that you placed on the paper. And from there, you look at the distance that it migrated. And so it might be there for, for this dot. It might be a small distance for another dot it might be a larger distance, but you essentially look from that line to the point where you're actually seeing the dot visualized. And then you compare that to the distance migrated by what they call the solvent front. And the solvent front is just how quickly 
the solvent, your ether, is moving up. And we have an assumption that because the ether is not a very, very polar compound, it will travel more quickly. So the solvent front will reach all the way, and you'll see a level of dampness moving up and up and up until it reaches this point. So then what you do is you can simply compare the distance migrated by your substance versus the distance migrated by your solvent front. And then you're going to be able to calculate the retardation factor for that component. So remember with column chromatography, you pour a liquid down a column and the one that elutes most quickly is going to be the least pol polar component. With thin layer and paper, what you do is you put these dabs here and then you put your paper or your thin layer substance into a beaker containing an ether. And the one that travels the most is the least polar component of your mixture. And the ones that travel less are going to be more polar. And essentially what you have there is then the ability to calculate the RF, the retardation factor, which is the distance traveled by your substance over the distance traveled by your solvent front. And finally, we get to gas liquid chromatography. It's very similar to column chromatography in a lot of ways, but there is one difference. And that is that whereas in column, your stationary phase was these solid beads that are very polar, in gas liquid chromatography, the stationary phase is actually liquid that is somehow attached to a packed column. And so you have a column here with a liquid attached to it. And the mobile phase in this case, rather than being a liquid like it is in column chromatography, the mobile phase here is a gas that is mixed with some sort of carrier gas, something that is inert and won't interact, but can help carry your compound. And that will usually be something like helium. And so what you do is you basically have your mixture of the sample and you inject it with a carrier gas like helium. And then it goes, travels through here and it interacts with the column. And when it interacts with the column, which contains your liquid, certain components of this gas and carrier mixture with the carrier gas, certain components of it will interact with the column more, usually based on their polarity once again. And the ones that interact with the liquid stationary phase a lot, those ones will elute more slowly. And so again, much like we use the word elution with column chromatography, we also use elution with gas liquid chromatography. The difference is that our mobile phase is now our sample mixture injected with a carrier gas. So now it exists in a gas phase and it travels through here. It will interact with our column containing the liquid. Some parts will interact with the liquid a lot. Other parts won't interact with the liquid very much. And the ones that interact less, usually meaning they're less polar or somehow they don't want to interact with that liquid stationary phase, the ones that interact with the liquid less will elute more quickly. And so they'll reach our detector first. And then the components that are perhaps more polar or somehow interact more with our stationary phase, those will elute more slowly. And so once again, we're finding a way to separate our mixture. But this time, it's by injecting it with a carrier gas and using a gas mobile phase and a liquid stationary phase. But with all of these, if you can realize that the stationary phase is going to be something that is polar and that the mobile phase will either be a liquid or gas that interacts with that stationary phase, it becomes clear we can separate these things based on polarity differences. And the more polar components of your mobile phase, which is usually your unknown liquid, the more polar components of that mobile phase will travel more slowly, whether it involves eluding through a column, whether it involves migrating up a thin layer or paper compared to the rate at which the solvent does that, or whether it involves moving through a column when injected with a carrier gas. The more polar components will travel less, and so that allows us to separate a lot of our unknown compound based upon the differences in the polarity of its different components.
So that is chromatography. It's separation that takes many different shapes, but it's always going to be separating based upon polarity differences. Thank you.